and you know what's gonna be crazy guys from now on we're gonna go outside and test these two modes because these are the two modes I'll probably end up using in my Kyoto trip so either 1080p or 4.8k but I just want to test some outside scenery and see which one gives me the best just not only sharp I just want nice resolution with definition as well as colors so both are equally important not so much sharpness again so let's not mistake sharpness with definition I want a clear image to see the leaves the details on the bamboo forest and the castles so today we're gonna test that and see which one works best so let's go outside and give it a shot to think of this comparison they both have their cons and pros the pros and cons just ah man you just gotta use the mode you need for the shot and I don't know what I'm gonna do in Kyoto man choices magic lantern has too many choices well as you can see again they all had the pros and cons there's just too many options in magic lantern right now we're in 4.8k and 12 bits and it's just awesome what we can do with magic lantern we got the if you want to go for an anamorphic style you go with a 5.2k we got open gay with a 3.2 aspect ratio there's just so many options and it just depends on the scene but i just can't make up my mind for kyoto i don't know what to do for real guys so now we're in 1080p the open gate 3 by 2 aspect ratio 12 bits and everything's gonna be exported to ProRes 422HQ I know I could do 444 to squeeze the quality out of it but uh, we just don't need that right now for this test but it's just awesome it's awesome to have all these options and awesome but confusing because in Kyoto I don't know what I'm gonna do I've been liking what I'm getting out of 1080p recently. It's looking really good in ProRes. Very clean, but it's just, man, 4.8. Can it get cleaner definition? I'm not looking for sharpness here. I just need clean definition so you can see the leaves and enjoy the scenery in Kyoto. It's gonna be a lot of details with the castle, the buildings. Oh, a fish just jumped and uh it's a lot of details in kyoto kyoto is a beautiful city beautiful has beautiful towns and streets but i probably end up shooting a little bit of both 1080p here and when i really want to get a clean wide shot i might switch over to the 4.8k but in general probably be 1080p because we do have a i like the field of view shooting in 1080p all right tell you what guys 
when I get back to the studio, I'm gonna take a really close look at all the footages after being graded, and I'll give you my thoughts there from the studio because I can't come up with a conclusion now until I see and compare side by side everything. All right, here we are in the studio with the EOS M shooting me right now, 1080p. Behind me, I got DaVinci open up with all the files that I just shot and you just saw. And what do I think? Oh man, I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm more confused than before because I saw how clean, I could see the potential of 1080p, how good if we work it well, how good it looks, it's just, it was amazing. And I was so surprised how close it came to one, the, the crop mode, the three times three mode, how close it came to the one times three mode. I expected the one times three to be a lot cleaner, but that wasn't the case, especially when we did the up close shot. Up close three times three is just fantastic. Super detail, has great field of view and the bokeh is just, everything just looks awesome. And that's why it's making this decision so difficult to, to plan what modes to shoot in when I don't have that much time. When we get to Tokyo, it's gonna be run and shoot time. I'm gonna mount the camera on my gimbal, the WeBuild S, and I'm just gonna run around different areas of the city and the countryside, and hopefully get some nice footage for you guys. But I just wanna practice now, get down the settings that I think will look best on different scenarios. And I did learn something though, for trees, and leaves 1080p was just fine so i'm going to use that when i we're in the bamboo area but perhaps when we're in the castle and fine details where the gold arc and the artwork around the buildings around the castle i'll probably switch over to the one times three or even the one times one mode to get really honed down clean details of all the architecture and then back when we're in the street i'll probably switch over to 1080p again to get some really nice wide field of view. Now the gear I'm gonna be taking with me is the Canon EOS M that is recording me right now, 1080p. And this is paired up right now with the Sigma lens, which I will be taking because it pairs and balances nicely with the camera grip on the WeBuild gimbal. And also the other lens I'm gonna take with me is the TTR Artisan 35mm f1.4, which is a fantastic lens. And let me tell you, 35mm in 1080p, it's a beauty of a setup. The images I get out of that combo is fantastic. So I'm definitely gonna be swapping out that lens in and getting some close-up shots. Let's not forget, of course, I'm a, a heart, I'm still a Fuji guy. This is my baby right here. I'm gonna be taking still straight out of the camera with this, some JPEGs, as well as some true 4K with the Eterna. And I'm gonna be playing around with the DR400 to get high dynamic range. So I'm gonna to try to shoot as much as I can with this camera and hopefully I'm not too distracted with the EOS M. But anyway, that's the situation I'm in right now. It's just too many choices and it's gonna be great. I can't wait to get to Kyoto. Well guys, I hope this video, I hope I didn't ramble too much, but basically what I'm trying to tell you is we have too many options and just pick the option that works best for your scene and in the scene that I'm going to, they're gonna be various. So that means we're gonna be shooting in various modes. So subscribe, stick around. Don't forget to hit that little bell to let you know when that video does come out. It's gonna be a while cause we haven't gone yet, but when I do, I can't wait to share with you guys the experience. And if you have any questions, any comment, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And what else is there to say? But uh, yeah, if the, you found this video helpful, educational in any way, smash that like button. It's gonna help out the channel and also share so other people that are curious or wanna learn more about Magic Lantern, we can you know, learn from each other and hopefully this video could help them as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys on another video. Peace.